Now, a question that we need to ask is, what do we think of Muhammad? And what do we think of the Quran? In our conversations with Muslims, that question always comes up. There's many reasons for that, but one is, the question is like a test. The Quran says, Christians are the closest to Muslims in faith. Wow. It says, Christians are the friends of Muslims. The Quran advises Muslims, go to the Christians' homes and for their feasts, you know. Enjoy their feast with them. And invite them to your feasts. Feast with each other. And occasionally, Muslims will invite me, like to the Feast of Sacrifice or the Feast when Ramadan is ending and so forth. It's a wonderful honor to be invited to their feasts. And um, the Quran encourages that. In Somalia, over Christmas, we would invite many Muslims to come to our center for a Christmas feast, you know, and they would come. The Quran encourages that. But then the Quran says, now these Christians who are the people of the book, the closest to in faith, um, there's a test that you should give to them to see whether their hearts are really sincere. And the test is to repeat to them s some of the verses in the Quran. And if they fall on the ground and say, praise be to God, praise be to God, this is the word of God, even weeping with joy as you share this word, then you know their heart is sincere. If you do not, uh, if they do not say this is the word of God, then you know that the Christian's heart is really not sincere. And if they're rejecting the faith, then you must be careful. <laughs> like in the United Kingdom, when I was having these dialogues, I remember one day I said, the Quran commands you, ask me some questions. I'm a person of the book, so I welcome some questions. And my Muslim colleague, with a chuckle said, yes, but the Quran also warns me, be careful or David might deceive you. <laughs> so there's always that ambivalence, you see. And so the litmus test is, when a Muslim asks you, what do you think of Muhammad and what do you think of the Quran? It is his way of probing whether your heart is really sincere. Following? Okay, let's just break in groups. Um, briefly, if you could just slip over there, twos. And let's discuss that a little bit. This is the question. Just imagine I am a Muslim Imam. You are in a mosque. You've all gone to visit the mosque that night. And he's given a long report on what the Quran is, what Muhammad is. And he welcomes you, his Christian brothers, his Christian, uh, the, these Christians who are the closest in faith to the Muslims. The conclusion of the evening, he now gives you the little test. What do you think of Muhammad? What do you think of the Quran? How will you respond? Okay, just get in groups. If you could just slip over there, so there's two there. But are uh, women, uh, uh, can they, do they have the right to come to the mosque? Uh, <laughs> well, it depends on the mosque. Uh, it, it, some places they will have the women in a separate section. Uh, some places the women have a separate mosque. Um, if it's a group of Christian men and women, very often, they will invite us to come together, if it's a rather liberal mosque. And most of the mosques in the United States, in the rather liberal atmosphere in the US, I have never been told I cannot invite women along to the mosque when we go. Yes. And they participate in the questions in the United States. This would not be true every place. But uh, I would think right here in Kursk, if there's a mosque, men and women would be invited if you want to go. I would think so, in this liberal Russian atmosphere. Yes. You two men there, and you two men here, okay? And then you two women, and then if you could just join Olga over there, just go around to where Olga's sitting, just for a few minutes, you discuss what your response will be. So I'm, an, I'm Imam Daoud, so I want to hear your response to my question. <laughs> Okay, in the mosque you will not have a long time to decide how you're going to respond. You won't have a chance to consult this way. But it's a good thing to have a chance to consult uh, in this class. So uh, I mean, just imagine we're in a mosque. You've been invited that evening. And Imam Daud is me. 
And so at the end of the evening, I say, and what do you think about Muhammad and what do you think about the Quran? You see? So I'm testing you to see whether your heart is sincere or not. How will you respond? Let's hear the women first of all. How will you respond? The feelings of the Muslims. And uh, we know that we have many things in common. And I would add some more. We appreciate the fact that Koran teaches people to love their neighbor. And the Bible teaches the same. That's probably all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, very good. Yes, this group over here. I would think Muhammad for us is a prophet. Uh, the Quran is a book spirit. Uh, there are so many interesting themes about love, health, and peace of the world. Okay, okay, so there's some in the Quran that you appreciate. Okay, all right. Yes? Yeah? Uh, it's, it's so hard to, to answer this question. I don't want to be killed right there in the mosque. Um, I would say that um, God created everybody equal and we should respect each other, respect uh, our brothers and, f uh, uh, well, brothers, I don't know, should I say brothers or not, uh, uh, Muslims. And uh, it's a good thing that the Quran speaks about uh, Christ Messiah, and uh, I still don't know what to say about Muhammad. It's related to the faith of uh, Muslim Imam. I'm afraid to make a mistake. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I would say that uh, Muhammad was a sincere man. His heart was filled with the fear of God and sincere desire to find the way to please the only one God which exists. And Quran is a reflection of his uh, understanding of that way to please God, the only God which exists. Mm -hmm. Okay. This group up here? Yeah, I'll probably two things. First, I would say, if you believe there are several prophets, include Jesus and Torah and Zabur and something, so I would say everything in Quran supposed to be in the line with other prophets. God could not divide himself. If you believe in other, prophet, uh, other word of God given through Moses, Abraham, and Jesus, so I would say I can say the word of God is everything that inclined together, I mean, with all the other prophets. But the, the Muhammad, I would say, you call himself a prophet. And I would say everybody who would say the God's words is a prophet. Not everything we say is a God's words, but when you say the God's words, you're the prophet. So in this case, if I'm the preacher and I'm saying the God's words, I'm kind of a prophet. So <clears throat> in this sense, I say, yes, Muhammad, whenever he pronounced the God's words, he was a prophet, but you also understand he was a man. I, this is just... Okay. All right, you, you, I, I appreciate your, your careful look at this question and your struggle with how, how to respond to the question. The, of course, back of the question is the Muslim conviction that the Quran is the final revelation, the criterion of all truth, and that Muhammad is the seal of the prophets. Um, do you believe Muhammad is the seal of the prophets? Do you believe that the Quran is the criterion of all truth? Those are questions back of the question, you see. And um, so it's a very serious question. It's a question, frankly, that I welcome. I welcome that question. And it comes to me again and again in my conversation with Muslims. I welcome the question. I welcome the question because it opens the door wide to bear witness to Jesus. And the response I seek to give is that the witness of the Torah, the Zabur, and the Injil, and all the holy writings of God upon which I stand, is that the Messiah is the Savior of the world. This promise about the coming of the Messiah begins already with Adam and Eve in the garden, where God promises that a son born to the woman will deal with evil. He will crush the head of the evil one. He'll be wounded in the battle. And you go on through the Torah and the prophetic writings, there's this anticipation that a day will come when the Messiah will come, and he is the Savior. He is the truth center you see. And so I stand 
I am committed to Jesus, the Messiah, as the truth center of the universe and as the savior of the world. As for Muhammad and the Quran, the question I have is, do they point to the centrality of Jesus, the Messiah, or do they take us in other directions? And that's a question for you as a Muslim to ask yourself, to see. But I am committed to Jesus, the Messiah. He is the one to whom I am committed. That's right. I'm a follower of Jesus. And I stand upon the scriptures uh, which bear witness to him. So I use that question as an opportunity to bear witness to the centrality of Jesus, the Messiah. Uh, I have walked the way with Muslims for some 40 years. In my experience, they always say, thank you for your response. We understand where you stand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you say yeah. the same things about the Quran. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Like the same yeah. The same thing, the same thing about the Quran. You know, um, there's much in the Quran I appreciate. The centrality is Jesus. As Muslims, you believe the word has become a book, the Quran. We bear witness the word has become human in Jesus. I'm committed to him as the center of it all. And to what extent the Quran embraces that center uh, or does not is for you as a Muslim to consider. Mm -hmm. But I'm committed to Jesus, the Messiah. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed over 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at www.tvseminary.com. Yes. And uh, what would, would be unwise way to answer the testing question of Muslims? What, uh, what would be the uh, wrong. wrong, bad way to answer the question? Well, the most obvious wrong way, I believe, to answer the question is the way many Christians do, which is to, um, which is to, uh, I don't even want to repeat some of the things they say about the Quran and about Muhammad. It's so terrible, you see. I think that it, it is so wrong. That's how I feel. That um, I think we need to approach the question very respectfully and, um, and humbly. But use the open doors to bear witness to the centrality of Jesus. So when our Muslim friends ask the question, what do you think about the Quran? Is it the word of God? What do you think about Muhammad? Is he the seal of the prophets? It's a wonderful question. I always welcome that question because it opens the door for us to enter in to deep conversations about ultimate questions of faith. And for me, I'm not the judge of Muhammad or the Quran. That's not my calling. I am called, I know, to be a follower of Jesus the Messiah. And I believe that the total biblical witness, beginning with Adam, is pointing forwards toward the coming of the Messiah. And in the New Testament, we read that he has come. He is the truth center of the universe. The incarnation of truth is found in him. In him, the word has become human and lived among us. He is the savior of the world. I am committed to Jesus the Messiah. And the question which we need to ask, is to what extent does Muhammad and the Quran embrace the centrality of the Messiah as the savior of the world? And this, of course, is a question that Muslims need to ask. And we as Christians, likewise, as we look at Muhammad and the Quran, need to ask that question. But the centrality of faith for me is Jesus the Messiah, and that is consistent with the total biblical witness. Now, having said that, yes, I have much respect for Muhammad. Um, uh, in Mecca, as he begins for those 12 years, preaching against polytheism. Well, I'm against polytheism. All of us who are followers of God are against polytheism. And his commitment to justice and to righteousness. He was an orphan boy. The Quran never forgets that, you know. An orphan boy that God cared for. And the Quran is committed to, right, to, to, to justice and, and to human rights commitments, you see. All of that I embrace. It's very, very important. Um, and, uh, and the Quran, there's much in the Quran which as Christians we embrace. Uh, for example, some of the Quranic references in regards to Jesus, we simply applaud. He's born of the Virgin. That's also in the Bible, you see. He is the Messiah. Alhamdulillah, we agree he is the Messiah. 
And so there's much within the quote and likewise that I find very helpful. But in my ultimate commitments, it is to Jesus the Messiah, who is Savior, and the revelation of all truth is found in him. He is the center through which I evaluate uh, all religions and cultures and prophets, you see, because he has the final word. In previous years, we read here in, um, in, um, in Hebrews, the first verses of the book of Hebrews in the New Testament. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. That the prophets are preparation for the coming of the Messiah. He is the center. That's what we confess as followers of the gospel. So thank you for the question. It's an excellent question. And um, I appreciate that you have asked me that question. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10, 11. How to give to TVS ministry. You may give online at efta.org slash give now. In the description place, write Russia Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150. Or make checks out to EFCA. Write on the check memo line, Russian Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150. Mail to EFCA Donor Services, 901 East 78th Street, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55420-1300 or send your gift through PayPal for tvs.gift at gmail.com.